a study from the University of Michigan reveals surfaces can be a risk for COVID-19. This study is based on a nursing home setting. Patty, is this surprising news? No, um, as you know, Jeff, you know, this has been something that we've been talking about for a while. Um, the recent article that I wrote, uh, the virus doesn't care. We, we mentioned that surfaces do matter. We don't know how the surfaces matter, but we know that this virus, obviously airborne number one, the way to become infected, but that contaminated surfaces do matter. We just don't know the percentage of individuals who become infected via that route is. We're gonna talk about your article in a few minutes, but let me ask this question. I know you looked at the study in detail. What can the cleaning industry do with this information in response to this study? Well, one thing is to recognize that the um, proper cleaning and disinfection really does matter. Uh, what we he, what we read in a lot of um, the reports that come out is as long as routine cleaning is being done, um, then we don't have to worry about anything. Well, define for me what routine cleaning is. I mean, you and I can define what we would expect, what we consider more hygienic cleaning, but routine cleaning is not something that's defined. And so we really need to focus on what we call hygienic cleaning making sure that what we are doing is effective and, and, you know, and obviously a lot of employers want it to be efficient as well. It doesn't mean that you have to change too much of what you're doing, but you do need to pay attention to how you're cleaning, you know, looking at the disinfectant, making sure that it's applicable for what you're using and that something as simple as a dwell time is being um, respected. Absolutely. Uh, here's, a quote from the study. Let's talk about this. I'm going to read this. It says 90% of current COVID patients' rooms had detectable coronavirus on at least one surface. Days later, the virus was still detectable on certain surfaces, particularly TV remote controls and nurse call buttons. The time the virus was active was days after discovering this. They checked that. Seems disturbing to me. Does this make sense? Uh, yes, it does. I mean, what they they also in the in the study they qualified that more research has to be done. You know, is this still infectious? They were re they were measuring RNA, uh, of which is you know what the virus is made out of, and you know it's one of those things where they really focused on those what we call high touch points. So, you know, uh, remote controls, uh, the call button for the nursing staff, uh, the bed rails, anything that was, you know, could be touched easily. They even made mention that people who were more mobile, they had, they found more potential contamination or more contamination. So, I mean, it's a lesson to be learned, as you know, you know, the virus really doesn't care if it's a nursing home or a school situation, a home, a, a restaurant, a business. What we need to think about is how are we taking care of, of cleaning, disinfection, those high touch points. And if you think about it, um, what we were doing last winter, we were really paying attention to those high touch points. People were wearing masks, they were social distancing, they were cleaning and disinfecting. We're not seeing that as much as in this. And I think that's a concern as we're heading into the flu season. You know, we wanna make sure our flu numbers stay down. People are starting to come up with respiratory illnesses right now, which you know complicates things because the first thing they do is run out to get tested <laughs> for COVID. But we need to continue to pay attention to not only our indoor air, not only wearing our masks this, you know, as we're heading into the holidays and winter season, but also cleaning and disinfecting those at least high touch point surfaces. So time for the cleaning industry to uh, gear up and go back to battle, it sounds like, with winter coming. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Patty, the article that you wrote, you know, I've got a copy right here. I was digging for it. That's what I was doing. The virus <laughs> doesn't care. In this article, which is in the latest issue of ISSA Today, it's online as well at ISSA.com. Uh, this article, you list seven steps to keep safe. Could you give us a quick run through of what those are? 
So number one is get vaccinated. We know that's important. Yeah, you know. If nothing else, it protects you from being get the serious illness and death. Um, number two, wear your mask. If you're going out in public and you're going to be in a crowded situation where you don't know the status of people's vaccination rates or their testing status, you know, protect yourself, your family and others. Wear a mask. Um, do social distance. You know, and we find this all the time. We, we're finding ourselves not standing in line as close to, as, as, to individuals as we used to. But again, that social distance. Number four, you know, is assess and address, you know, your, your indoor air quality. We know that this is an airborne pathogen as far as the primary route, but it's not the only uh, indoor pathogen or as far pathogen that's an indoor air quality concern. Flu, tuberculosis, there are many others. You know, we need to really look at our indoor spaces and make sure that we have hygienic, um, healthy indoor spaces. And that's really critically important. Um, you know, the next is hand hygiene. You know, continue to, we, we need to wash our hands, hand health, um, coming into the winter months, making sure that we use lotion even. Um, and also when we don't have the ability to wash our hands, use that hand sanitizer, make sure that you have some with you. Um, you know, surfaces, we need to make sure that our surfaces are clean, sanitized, disinfected when we need to. Pay attention to those high touch points, the doorknobs, the handles on, on um, handrails, um, you know, the, uh, the, the TV remotes where they make sense. Um, we need to make sure that those high touch points in our situations, in our, in our daily lives, whether it's offices, um, restaurants, need to be taken care of and then get educated. It's one of those things that we are still learning, even after all this time with this particular virus, COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, we are still learning about this virus. And it's really important that we make sure that we are well-educated. I was keeping track. You got them all seven from the article. So, uh, yeah. and I don't think you had notes there, Patty. So good job with that. Of course you did write it. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you uh, for getting together today and talking about this. Uh, hopefully, and I'll put the URL for the study down below in the description on, below the video. So people can click right to it so they can do their own research of this, but great information. And hopefully the cleaning industry will respond. Mm -hmm.